coming up in this episode, we create an AI vehicle that drives around the course with us and is a little bit better at driving than I am. I'm Xanderwood. I make indie games and tutorials on game development. I also play your indie games every week on my channel. Make sure you subscribe and click that bell icon so you never miss a video. Okay, everybody, welcome back to the off-road game tutorial series. This episode will be focusing on adding some AI cars. We've got one down here. This is our player car. I have off camera changed the look of this one. Um, I've just added uh, some different tones. I've just played around with the shading a little bit. You can change yours if you want to. It's not essential to the tutorial, which is why I did it off camera. Um, but it's up to you. You can do yours if you want to. <clears throat> right, now, first thing we need to do is clone this car. So right click, clone object, click again, make sure you're in the objects layer. And I'm going to change the look of it so it's distinguishable from our car. And I'll do this off camera. Okay, so this is what I've got. <clears throat> I've just made it a little darker in all areas. Uh, you can design yours however you want to. Uh, I do need to give it another name. I'm going to call it AI underscore car and that is going to be the AI car. Um, I'm going to remove the behaviors, the eight directions and the scroll to that the player had because there's no need for that. And we're going to give it a new behavior and that behavior is going to be car. Um, and you may ask why we put the car on the AI but not on the player. And that's a great question. You could put the car on the player. I just have chosen to do it with the eight directional movement, um, but you can do it with the car as well if you prefer. So the first thing we need to do is set the maximum speed. The maximum speed for the player at the moment is um, it's not a thousand. If you look at the event sheet here, we've got normal max speed at 50. So I'm going to set the AI car to be 75. I want it to go a little faster because we're going to be using nitros. Um, we also will in future episodes program in the ability for the AI car to pick up nitros and give itself spoot beasts um, when it chooses to. Uh, that will be coming up in a future tutorial. Uh, the acceleration is going to be the same. It's going to be 50 and the deceleration is going to be 25 which is going to mirror the player and then the steer speed and the drift recover and the friction I'm going to leave all at default and I'm just going to test that out and see what that feels like with the default controls because don't forget when the defaults checked I'm going to be able to control it I've right, got the default controls checked on the player as well so take those off just uncheck default controls and now we'll be able to do it again we don't need to wait for the timer because we're not programmed in so that works quite nicely although I don't like the way it's bouncing off of the walls too much and I don't think I don't like the way it takes too long to steer so the, the steer speed I'm going to take up to 250 and I'm going to increase the friction from 0.4 to 0.8 Yeah, now we can speed around and turn corners nice and easily. But we're not going to be controlling it. The computer is going to be controlling it, so it's not going to make too much of a difference. So I'm going to go with those settings. I'm going to uncheck default controls because I don't want to be able to control it by accident by pushing the arrow keys. Now the next thing we need to do, if you notice, when the game starts, when the countdown goes from 3, 2, 1, and then it disappears, the timer doesn't start until... I cross the finish line or the start line. I don't want that to happen. I want as soon as the timer ticks down, I want the time to begin. So the way we're going to do that is if we go into our event sheet. So if we look in here in the lap time group, we've got the condition that says if we're in game, we add one to lap time um, every one second. And if we look up at the global variables, we can see that we start the game in true. So that means that this group is active as soon as we start the game. Now, if we look at the setup um, in the off-road group up here on the start of the layout, we've got lap time deactivated, controls deactivated. So we're not activating this group immediately when we start the game. So this isn't going to become um, this isn't going to become a factor. Um, the first thing that happens is we set the lap to zero, we do the countdown, we wait for three seconds and then we set it active. So instead of saying 
car on collision with start grid then set lap time active i'm just going to drag that up and pop that in as soon as the three second countdown has begun and that means that the timer is going to tick on and start ticking as soon as those three seconds are finished and we can delete that group so now if we test it the timer now starts ticking on and we can begin the race okay now we need to give the car the enemy the ai car um, some paths to follow so let's click on him and we're going to give him the path finding behavior so add new behavior and we're going to come down here and we're going to click path finding now the path finding is going to have its own set of controls and its own set of speeds the first thing we need to do is set the cell size to 16 because 30 is too big if we do 30 like that for example is an 8x8 if we do 30 um, he's going to struggle to get around some of these corners because the the width of the track is going to impede his ability to move um, we can keep the cell border at minus one and we can keep obstacles on solid but his max speed is going to be the same as the car which is 75 his acceleration is going to be the same as the car which is 50 his rotation speed is going to be basically the steer speed so we can keep that at 250 and rotate object needs to be checked because we're going to rotate that that sprite as he goes around corners diagonals are going to be on and it's going to be enabled now when we go back into the event sheet we're going to create a group and we're going to put all that uh, all those events in that group so add group and we're going to call this ai cup now on the events we're going to go system and we're going to say on starter layout because at the beginning of the layout we want this thing to start working we're going to add an action and we're going to find the car the car sprite that we created again ignore all the other things that i have this is just a mini game as part of a bigger game that i'm working on find the car sprite and we're going to find a path click on find path and then just leave everything at zero if we leave it at zero he's going to basically find a path he's going to basically find a path to the top left hand corner of the screen so we need to give him some checkpoints that he needs to reach so on the objects layer double click create a sprite color it any color you like it's not going to be visible I'm going to shrink it down and I'm going to call it checkpoint. I'm going to shrink it down and I'm going to put it right here in the middle of the road. I'm going to right click and I'm going to clone it and that's going to default to checkpoint 2 as a name and I'm going to put this one right here in this big space there I'm gonna right click I'm gonna clone it I'm gonna put it up here I'm gonna make it nice and long and that's gonna default name checkpoint 3 I'm gonna right click it I'm gonna clone it and I'm gonna pop it over here and like I did with the second one I'm gonna make it fill up that whole space there so he's got these four checkpoints that he's gonna to get to so we're gonna set the condition that the car finds his way to checkpoint one when he finds his way there he's gonna find his way here then he's gonna find his way here here and when he gets to this one he's then gonna find his way back to the beginning and every time he crosses the finish line we're gonna set up some instance variables that, that detect what lap he's on and then if he gets to the finish line before us at the end of lap three the game stops and it calculates the winner right Let's now put this into the event sheet. So on start a layout, we're gonna find a path and instead of zero now, we're just gonna start typing in checkpoint and we're gonna say checkpoint.x and the same thing on this one. We're gonna say checkpoint.y. So that's the first one. Then we need to add an event and we need to say, what do we do once we've reached it? So we're gonna say AI car and we're gonna come down and we're gonna say on a right, uh, sorry, on path found. So when he finds that path, you may have already guessed it. We're gonna go down and we're gonna say move along path. Then we're gonna add an event and we're gonna say AI car and we're gonna go on collision with another object. And when we collide with this checkpoint, what we are gonna do what we need him to do is find another checkpoint. So I'm going to copy this line of code up here and I'm going to drag it down and I'm going to change checkpoint.x to checkpoint2.x, which is the second checkpoint. And again, .y. 
and then I'm going to copy this out and I'm going to change checkpoint to checkpoint 2. So when we collide with checkpoint 2, we're going to find our way to checkpoint 3. Then I'm going to copy it out again and I'm going to change it and we're going to say when he finds checkpoint 3, we're going to go ahead and find checkpoint 4. And then the last time, When we found, when we collide with checkpoint four, we're gonna then find a path back to the first checkpoint that we started at. And then you've got this condition here, which we can then drag to the bottom that says, when we found the path, we move along it. So now if we play, off he goes, way ahead of us, but we can't see him behind those things. So let's just get these here make them initially invisible and then let's go. If he goes, running around the course, obviously he's got a head start on us because he doesn't wait for the 3, 2, 1 to count down. Oh, look at him go. Is he going to overtake us? Here he comes. Not when I got nitros. And there he comes around again. He's found the path. And there's our AI car. That's the fundamentals of how we're gonna get that to work. Obviously we can put in some conditions to make it a little bit more varied, but that's the basic fundamentals of how we're gonna get this guy to go around the course and race against us. Okay, so we need to make this a fair race. We need the AI car to now start when the timer hits zero. So this is how we're gonna do it. So we've got this AI car group. So on the setup, on the style of layout, we're going to add another one of these in so we're going to go add action and we're going to say system and we're going to start typing in a group i'm going to set active and the group we're going to deactivate is ai car so we don't want that to be working when the level starts then we want the timer to happen then we're going to copy that we're going to pop it down and then we're going to activate it okay so now if we play it three two one and away we go but our guy's not, he's not finding us. So the way I'm gonna fix that is I'm gonna take this line of code here that's in the group, because this group is deactivated when the layout starts. So by the time we activate it, it's too late. So I'm gonna take this one here, and I'm gonna drag it up, and I'm gonna pop it in here after the three seconds. I'm gonna get find path to checkpoint X, and that should fix the issue. And there he goes around the course, way ahead of me. We need to slow that guy down, he's too fast. Let's bring him down to 50. What's that, a thousand? Acceleration's a thousand, that's why he's going so fast. We need to set that at 50 as well. Apologies for that. Ours is 50 and 25. His is now 50, 25 and 50. There we go. Pick up these nitros. There we go. Got a couple of collisions to fix. Yeah, so that's, that's getting there. That's definitely getting there. We need to randomize his driving a little bit. At the moment, he's on a perfect circuit. We can change that by giving him some random variables to find paths to, and then we can set in the same conditions that if he hits the wall, he will slow down. But we're gonna do that in a future episode. That's the fundamentals of getting the AI car in place. We're gonna build on that in the next tutorial, so thanks for sticking around if you made it this far. I'm gonna need some names for these drivers, so when we finish the race, we're gonna have a leaderboard. I might do another one as well, so there might be three in total going around this course, but we will see. If you've got any suggestions for names, leave them in the comments below, and I will see you in the next episode.